Hey guys, Heidi Preeb here. This week we are talking about early signs of attachment healing. So these videos are not about how to do the healing work. They're not about what it's gonna look like when you are secure. It's just about taking note of what some of the signposts might be early on in the attachment healing process that show you you're headed in the right direction. So today we are talking about the anxious attachment style and what it looks like to begin to heal from an anxious attachment. So sign number one, and this is a big one and a difficult one, is that you start to recognize that you are responsible for which types of relationships you are engaging with. So when you are in an unhealed state as an anxiously attached person, it is very easy to feel like you are chronically the victim of your circumstances, right? So it can feel like you're always being treated wrong, you're always being slighted, that for whatever reason people just do not give you the love that you believe you deserve, but as you begin to heal from the anxious style, you start to recognize that a lot of why you feel that way is because you tend to chase people who cannot give you what you need. But as you start to heal from this attachment style, you start to realize that you are responsible for which types of people you are continuously pursuing. If you are going after people that you know from the get-go are kind of emotionally unavailable, that you know don't actually want the kind of relationship that you want, or who maybe tell you outright I don't want to be in a relationship with you. You are responsible for the fact that you are bringing those relationships into your life as opposed to being conscious about the type of relationship you want and waiting patiently until you meet someone who you can build a true foundation of emotional intimacy with. So this step of the process is about realizing that you have choice in ways that you may not have always known you had choice, right? You may have always thought that you just love too hard, that you just give too much, but in reality, if you are giving to someone who does not want to receive, or if you are loving someone who does not want your love, you are not truly being loving, caring, and giving. You're being a little bit manipulative by trying to reel someone in and change their mind about you so that you feel better, but you are not respecting what they truly want, which might be to be left alone to not be in a relationship, right? So recognizing that when you are crossing people's boundaries like that, you are not loving too hard, you are refusing to respect someone else's bid for autonomy, and that you are responsible for the dynamic that develops as a result of that is a very painful lesson to learn, but it's also really indicative that you are starting to become consciously aware of your patterning and the way it plays out. Because to be anxiously attached means that you are constantly unconsciously searching for someone who seems like a parent figure to have relationships with. And the problem with seeking out someone who's like a parent figure is that you're probably going to be chasing people who don't show much emotion like a parent does not. Because you believe that means they can cater to all of your needs, but in reality, what you're probably going to end up doing is chasing avoidantly attached people who probably aren't able to give you that sense of emotional intimacy that you're looking for. But your problems will not be solved by them opening up and learning to be secure. Your problems will only be solved when you are able to develop that secure base inside of yourself so that you're able to recognize what you need in a partnership, why you've been chasing people who can't give you that, and how you're going to need to start showing up differently in order to have that kind of partnership. That's where the real healing work begins. And when you're able to get to that stage of the healing process, you are absolutely well on your way to beginning the work that actually needs to get done on attachment healing. Sign number two that you're starting to heal from an anxious attachment style is that you're able to see limerence for what it is. So limerence is kind of the fancy psychological term for having a really intense crush that you believe down to the core of your being is true. So I saw this tweet the other day that went viral that was like, a crush is just a lack of information. And I was like, that is absolutely so apt, right? We all do it. We all get little crushes on people where we make them up inside of our heads and we decide that they have all of these traits that we don't actually have any way of knowing if they have or not, right? Until we get to know them better and actually figure out who they are and what they're all about. But to have limerence around someone means to believe in the things that we have made up about a person despite concrete factual evidence in the real world showing to us that that is not true, right? So being limerent about someone means kind of pitting this redemption fantasy on them and deciding that we will feel better and things will be good forever if only we can get that person to love us in the very specific way that we want them to. I don't think I need to explain in concrete terms why this tends to go so wrong so often, but I do think that it's a very key sign of healing for the anxiously attached style and the fearful avoidant when they're able to recognize that the limits they have is just that, a fantasy and a lack of information. And that yes, they absolutely might get to know this person and truly find out pieces of information about them that they love and that they really value and treasure. But to not have limerence means to accept 
any scenario in which reality goes against your fantasy and to not try to push your fantasy onto reality in order to make yourself feel better. So sign number two that you're starting to heal from an anxious attachment style is that you're able to recognize and name limerence for what it is and not try to interfere with reality by pushing your fantasies onto reality, right? Again, it's really hard to stop doing that, right? Even securely attached people get crushes and invent little things about the personalities of other people inside of their head. But the difference is that they're able to recognize when they're doing that, and also when it becomes counterproductive to the relationship. But when you have an anxious attachment style that is unconscious and unhealed, you often aren't able to recognize when your limerence is getting in the way of actually getting to know someone. So sign number two that the healing process is starting for you is that you're at least able to consciously recognize when that's happening, when you are resisting reality in favor of this fantasy that you have in your head about someone. And bonus points if you're able to start consciously fighting against that and finding methods for staying present and allowing yourself to be a little bit disappointed when someone doesn't act the way you expect them to act, but recognize that it is their right to be who they actually are, not to be the person who you think of them as in your head, right? Doesn't mean it doesn't suck, doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, but you're able to recognize I don't get to lash out at someone because they're not reading the script that I wrote for them inside of my head and never communicated to them. So you're no longer trying to make reality conform to your fantasies, you're accepting that reality sometimes sucks, but if you persist with it, there are some wonderful jewels you could arrive at when you actually get to know someone for who they are, not who you want them to be. Sign number three that you're starting to heal from an anxious attachment style is that you're able to recognize the value of self-regulation and you're actively working to start cultivating strategies around it. So the unhealed anxious attachment style really struggles with self-regulation. They tend to believe that when I'm feeling bad, when I'm struggling with my emotions, the only way to feel better is to get someone else to help me regulate myself or to give me comfort or validation or whatever it is that I feel like I need in order to be reassured that I am okay. Self-regulation means having strategies for reminding yourself that you are okay in situations where it's not necessarily appropriate to consistently reach out to other people. And secure attachment means that you're able to both co-regulate with other people and self-regulate internally when need be. And I really like to think of self-regulation as just the process of building a relationship with yourself where you are accountable to yourself, you trust yourself, and you respect yourself. And I do have another video on this that I will link in the description of this video. I think it's called How to Build a Healthy Relationship with Yourself, and it just goes over some of these small steps we can take towards becoming more internally self-regulated and feeling like we have that secure base we want so badly from someone else inside of ourselves so that we do not have this chronic bleeding wound that is an external locus of control where we feel like we can't regulate ourselves through difficult times. So sign number three that you are starting to heal from an anxious attachment style is that you are able to recognize the times in which self-regulation is needed even if you can't do it yet, right? That's step two. Step two is being able to take steps in that direction and form strong, consistent self-regulatory strategies. But step one is just recognizing in a situation where maybe you're inclined to lash out or inclined to demand attention from someone else, that actually this is a situation where it might be more useful for you to be able to regulate your own emotional experience and approach other people in a calmer state, right? Building that awareness brings you into step one of the healing process. All right, that's all I have to say for today on this topic, but let me know in the comments anything that resonated for you or any aha moments that you're having in the process of healing your attachment style. As always, I love you guys. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you back here again soon. Mm -hmm.